Transformations of cubic functions. Here are your state standards that go along with this lesson. And to be successful, you need to be able to describe transformations of cubic functions, graph transformations of cubic functions, and write functions that represent transformations of cubic functions. Key ideas. This should seem familiar, so we are working with cubic functions, which remember is something to the third degree or has an exponent of three. But we've also looked at transformations of linear, absolute value, and quadratic functions. And you should see that the rules are very much the same. So if you have a horizontal translation, your h value is inside parentheses, so it's going to be x minus h. So when it's negative 5, it moves to the right. So it would move to the right instead of to the left. So it's kind of opposite the way you expect it based on the sign. But that's your horizontal translation. If it's x plus 2, or here in this case x plus 3, it moves to the left, however many units. A vertical translation, your k value is outside the parentheses, so it moves as expected. Plus 1 moves up negative 4 moves down. Again, that's your vertical, so this is always going to go up or down. Your reflections, if your negative is inside the parentheses, so f parentheses negative x, so if your x is the negative value, then it's a reflection across the y-axis. If the negative is in front of f of x, that's changing the y here, so negative f of x, and that's going to reflect it or flip it across the x-axis. Your horizontal shrink or uh, stretch or shrink. So graphs stretch away from or shrink towards the y-axis by a factor of 1 over a. This is probably the most confusing. This is the one that people get wrong a lot because they forget it's 1 over a. So here you've got 2x cubed, so the quantity of 2x cubed, and that's going to be a shrink by a factor of 1 half, not 2, by 1 half. And then you've got parentheses, 1 half x cubed, and that's going to stretch it by a factor of 2. And a vertical stretch or shrink, okay, this is when the a is on the outside of the f of x, okay? Same thing, you've got 8x cubed, stretched by a factor of 8, so it's not 1 over a, it's just a. So these two get a little bit confusing, so just make sure you refer to the rules each time you do it. And then g of x equals 1 fourth, x cubed, shrink by a factor of 1 fourth. And then this is just your parent function, and this just has a um, translation in each direction showing you how the horizontal translation kind of moves you opposite of the sign. So x plus 3, the quantity of x plus 3 cubed moves you to the left. The quantity of x minus 3 moves you to the right. Example 1, translating a cubic function. Describe the transformation of f of x equals x cubed, remember that's your parent function here, this is your cubic parent function, represented by g of x equals the quantity of x plus 5 cubed plus 2. Then graph each function. Alright, so if we want to describe the transformation, this x plus 5, this is inside parentheses, so we know that is a horizontal translation. And when it has a plus, that means it moves to the left. So we can say this moves 5 units left. And then plus 2, that's your vertical translation. This moves 2 units up. Then it says graph the function. All right, so cubic functions are just this curve that goes through the origin, has an end behavior to the left going to negative infinity and to the right going to positive infinity. So you can see this goes towards negative infinity 
and this goes towards positive infinity. So that's my parent function. That's f of x equals x cubed. And we know we're going to take the same function, and we're just going to move it left 5 up 2. So let's go ahead. We've already described it. Let's go ahead and type this in. So I'm going to type it in exactly how it is. So x plus 5 cubed plus 2. And you also can make a table of values. Pick some x's, plug it into the function, and graph three or four points and sketch that curve. But I was afraid I would mess up that curve so it wouldn't look as nice as if I did it on the calculator. So let's go ahead and put this down. So we have described the transformation and we have graphed each function. Again, if you wanted to graph this, just pick some x's, plug it in, cube it. That would be your graph of your parent function. You could use the same x's that you picked for this one, plug it into this function, and it would give you your new points here. Example 2, transforming cubic functions. Describe the transformation of f of x equals x cubed represented by g. Then graph each function. g of x equals negative one-fourth x cubed. All right, so we have a negative sign here and a one-fourth. So since there's no parentheses, we know that this negative is going to cause it to reflect across the x-axis. And the one-fourth is your a value. And again, since there's no uh or since the a is on the outside of the parentheses, there's no parentheses here, that means it's a vertical shrink. And it's going to shrink by a factor of what this is. So this is a, so this time it's going to be a vertical shrink by one-fourth. So we have a reflection. Across the x. And we have a vertical shrink by a factor of one fourth. All right, let me see if I can make that four better. Let's see here. All right, now we need to graph it. That is describing it. And I'm going to graph it using my graphing calculator again. All right, again, I already have the parent function listed just to save a little time here. So I'm going to graph negative one-fourth. And I don't need any parentheses here. X cubed. And then remember, it's going to reflect across the x. So that means this line is going to be reflected down here. And this line will be reflected up here. So it's reflected across the x-axis and a vertical shrink by a factor of one-fourth, which means it shrinks towards the x-axis by a factor of a, which is this one-fourth. So the blue line here is your parent function. And the red line here is g of x, or your transformation. g of x equals parentheses 2x cubed minus 3. All right, so this is the one that a lot of people get confused on. So 2 is my a, and negative 3 is my k value. So since 2 is inside parentheses, you need to look where it says horizontal stretch or shrink. So this one's going to be a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 over a. Since a is 2, it's going to be a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. And then this negative 3 is going to move it down 3. So let me see if I can put that down here without getting confused. 
So this is a horizontal I have to think about this too because it's by a factor of 1 over a and 1 over a in this case would be 1 over 2 and then it's also moved 3 units down. All right, so let's see what that looks like on the calculator. Again, I have my parent function here. So let's hit y equals, and this is going to be parentheses, 2x. Again, if you want to do this without a calculator, all you have to do is pick some x values, make you a table of values, plug the x's into the equation, and solve for y for each one and then that would be your ordered pairs and then you simply graph your ordered pairs and sketch the graph we've done that many times these tend to be um, harder to sketch on my computer so that's why i'm using my calculator to do this all right so you can see here the blue line is your parent function and you can see the red line is your transformation and it has moved you down three units. So you can see the y-intercept moves down three units. Every other point should as well. But it is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one-half. So it's going to shrink towards the y-axis. You can see it gets closer to the y-axis. Alright, so that is all for example two. It says describe and then it says to graph and we have done that for both A and B.